Um, yeah, and I'm nervous. <laughs> but I'll try to contain myself. Um, I uh, wrote a um, script, basically. I uh, coded in Notebox an application that generates uh, an image based on the content of digital text. So I'll give an example. So yeah, these are examples. Um, it all started with, um, at first I wanted to create a font machine that generated typography based on uh, architecture. So, <coughs> I, and that was a um, uh, school uh, graphic design uh, master's assignment. We had to do something around uh, randomness and I chose typography. So I didn't uh, phantom it myself one day in my room. That was a uh, school uh, yeah, assignment. So yeah, and the idea was uh, I based myself on I Ching and the idea that a number of uh, random yes no questions determine the shape of a letter. So I don't know if you know I Ching and it's not even that important. It's just the concept behind it. You throw, uh, you ask yourself a question, you throw a coin three times and then you get a broken line or a full line. And if you do that s six times, you get a specific he hexagon that has meaning. So I just applied the same concept on the visual, uh, visual uh, <coughs> parts of a letter. So that's a bit abstract. So concretely, I uh, yeah, just took pictures of windows all over the city and I different cities and whatnot. So I created three links and with those three links I had three constants that I could use to create a template for a letter and create an entire alphabet. And if you see the D, the empty D, that's the template written in code, you can fill uh, the yeah, the long, like this, huh? this is medium, this is short, this is long. And I made the three constant uh, lengths. So I could fill a D with any of those lines. And I made 64 of each length. So I would have a different uh, letter each time I ran the process. And get a letter based on architecture. Okay, yeah, these were the lines and the uh, yeah, examples. In a way, it's not even that important anymore, but it's the basis from where I started and specifically the lines, the idea of lines, it's all that remains in a way, but... Um, <coughs> okay, so during, I, at the end, when I finished the... Uh, Typography generation, I bumped into like uh, if you yeah if you uh, make an error you and all the lines get thrown together, you get like the small composition that represents a letter, and I thought that was interesting, so you would have like a different uh, different um, symbols, like abstract uh, references for letters. And I applied that to the concept of um, yeah, just sentences. When you, you write a sentence and you scramble the lines, then you get a small composition that represents that sentence. It's not uh, the content of <coughs> what is said isn't related, but I thought it was an interesting concept. So, uh, yeah, we then I ended up with uh, compositions like these. I can't remember the sentence 
uh, this was based on, which is something people always ask, but. <laughs> um, so, yeah, then uh, that took on for a little while, but then I found it stupid that you would have some kind of vague uh, abstract drawing that doesn't have anything to do with the sentence. That's a bit, I thought was stupid in a way. So I wanted to include content so that you would get a sentence and an abstract image that not literally, but uh, refers to the content and is structured by it. So <laughs> this is the hard part. I, it's in essence, it's really easy. And for people that do coding, I, that know code, it's um, really easy. And but people that don't know anything of it are usually, um, yeah, they, yeah. It's usually a tough conversation. But the basic idea is that I have uh, 23 dictionaries. Dictionaries are word lists. Basically, uh, literally, like a text file with words come uh, like those. So when I give in a sentence, uh, the sentence is analyzed. And the sentence, the words in the sentence are cross-referenced to the dictionaries that I have. So if in here you have woman, woman falls under nature, tree, trees is, um, to, yeah, it's mm, plural, plural, yeah. But um, yeah, it just uh, cuts off the plural part and um, turns it into singular. And then you have, um, yeah, when you do that with the entire sentence, you have an analyzation of what uh, kind of content is in there. It's really fake and uh, rough still, but it's really hard to um, divide the entire uh, word uh, vocabulary into specific subjective um, word lists because I have to copy paste each of them and then try uh, which with each new um, input see if there's words that aren't there and so on and so forth. So it takes a very long time. So I started out with a. Uh, I started out with just uh, four, but not the first four, but object, nature, architecture, and motion. But motion isn't here. Oh yeah, motion is now action, but that's just four verbs. And I use all this information to give you know, small impacts to uh, the way the image is drawn. Right now, uh, positive and negative uh, have the biggest influence because that's, those are the ones I've, um, I thought those were um, interesting to do because I want to, for Twitter and online um, uh, image making and on events with installations, it's uh, positive and negative are very, um, they give a lot, people are most of the time very positive or very negative, so it gives you a lot of results. So basically, uh, I started with uh, those four that I just said, and then started to split everything up as I went, and now we're at 22, <coughs> I have 23, but that's the, the garbage bin where all the strange words go. And uh, right there. Oh yeah. So the first four, like nature, object, architecture, culture, those are the ones that uh, uh, generate the visual um, parts <coughs> of the image. The other ones are all um, structure, they determine, um, yeah, I'm going to go further. So it's easier now, you see, the, um, that's from before, I, that's when I first started uh, working on the content. So it's really old, but I was a bit late with my presentation making. But um, those are the visual lines that represent a category. Uh, back then they were yeah, uh, architecture, objects and nature. 
and motion just gave a push to everything uh, yeah, behind the scenes. So this is in a way behind the scenes. No, not in a way. This is behind the scenes. And you can see like the, the green, the red, the blue, that's uh, each of those uh, categories as uh, <coughs> representing coordination, uh, coordinate path or structure <coughs> that behaves, I uh, now behaves in its, in its own way. Uh, I wanted to have each of those to have character like uh, back then with architecture, I wanted to have like keep the landscape effect and with uh, objects I wanted to have them clutter in or around or whatever, but that was I like the starting point in a way, not the, the everything you have to do everything with templates because it's such a large uh, concept or idea. So I just uh, put templates in. I think I lost my thread. Um, yeah, these are these are. Uh, examples from the first version. <coughs> yeah, I have also a really slow video. Um, I just put in a text, I believe, about the jungle. Uh, the jungle. So you see, uh, to uh, there was uh, to make a video to show people. Uh, but it's really long, <laughs> long and boring video. <laughs> <laughs> but the basic idea is visible. You have jungle, it cr creates this um, bushy. That was the, the concept with the uh, lines also to create like the bushy effect. It's really uh, cheap and fast, but it does the job. So this is jungle. And so that was uh, the, the basic uh, idea uh, to uh, the basic uh, the general idea but uh, yeah um, so at, at the time I was still studying graphic design yeah I was still gra studying graphic design so we needed to uh, create this uh, book about what we did and yeah I just keep kept on doing that I've been redoing uh, reworking the same publication over and over and to be honest with every installation there's always um, there's always publications involved somehow and yeah I think documenting on itself is important to me uh, the installations with the matrix printers all have um, uh, the idea of a timeline and um, printing out what happened, but that's going to come later, but printing out what happened and, and summarizing it in a visual and then keeping the, the uh, matrix print paper, chain paper, uh, as a booklet, as a, like a summary of the evening or things like that. So yeah, it's of importance. And uh, yeah, graphic designer, artist, coder. The thing is that, especially with the publication, I tried to uh, sell it. I uh, sell it to um, uh, go to a publisher and try to have it published, which made, uh, which was a really <coughs> difficult and long journey that led to nothing besides me uh, ending up with 10 books, I had 20 books that I can't seem to sell anywhere, <laughs> which was pricey. But um, the thing is that uh, all the publishers that publish graphic design books say, say oh, oh no, you're an artist and uh, whatever, go to the, uh, go to the artist uh, books and the artist books say, oh no, you're a programmer and you should go to the graphic designers and like, it's like a full circle of uh, uh, people that are scared of uh, the, uh, the book itself. Not that it's uh, anything special, but like the content doesn't seem to correlate with their uh, 
what their uh, publishing company is and yeah, there aren't any colored pictures in it and that's also important for some reason. <laughs> but um, uh, the, that thing, that idea, it applies also to yeah, other, um, like yeah, where do, you <laughs> where do you fit in? Because I, I'm a little bit of everything and a little bit of everything is in there so it's a really hard this idea to um, that I'm probably not uh, going to discuss right now in front of a lot of people because then I'll get like really vague and keywordy. But <coughs> yeah, but it's um, a problem, not yeah, a bit of a problem in a way with what I do. Oh yeah, that's uh, ta -da. that's a publication. And that's the um, uh, timeline for the installation that I haven't shown you yet. Um, so installations, the, the, the idea behind um, the concept of translating content, uh, textual content into an image is the basic work I, in, in a way, I only have one work. I'm throwing my entire presentation through. Uh, I, uh, you know. um, the I, there, uh, there is only one work in a way, and that's the general concept. So I use the idea of uh, uh, translating content in installations and in static works and uh, whatever, and that could be those could be considered as works, but in a way, is the core is um, the main work in a way. Because now yeah, I'll show some installation. Um, um, yeah, that's the very first I did. Typographic architecture. That's the very first time I tried and used the um, the uh, process to in an interactive installation in Berlin. <coughs> um, the problem was uh, mainly Berlin <laughs> because uh, everything I wrote, I wrote I, all the dictionaries are in English and the um, people in Berlin speak English but not, uh, I have the, they have to tell everybody it's in English, it's in English or you have to stand next to it and um, explain to people because otherwise it's not uh, very effective. Uh, there is not much input and I need correct Im input to generate an image because if the word's not uh, spelled correctly or uh, not recognized then I can't do anything with it. Now in retrospect that might have been even more, uh, yeah, never mind. Um, so the idea was that uh, my colleague uh, did it with uh, Kiritan Flux, who does the hardware for the installations. And we do it, uh, we create, uh, I do the coding and he does the keyboards and uh, yeah, the last installation had a small television set, but I'll show, I'll show that later. Um, so the idea was that people could walk by <laughs> and give in input and that the image would change. We projected the image on a wall and people could give input and that would change like the structure of the image. And so at the end of the evening, you would have a summary or um, you'd have um, uh, changes during the evening that you could notice. But in reality, uh, people don't contribute, I aren't easy to Voila, that's uh, a small slice of nonsense in a very, very, very big text file of nonsense. Because people just either like run by and like push the buttons and then run away. Or you, there was like one girl and I was talking to her and explaining everything and then she got uh, interested and then started to give input. But if you don't do that, people just uh, write uh, gibberish and you can't do anything with that. Which I, we, yeah, in a later installation, 
we retry that. Okay. So uh, this is, but ah, uh, 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 <coughs> no. Yeah, that's the uh, first time I started working with the matrix printer. Uh, basically, same same general concept. I uh, summarizing visually summarizing uh, a moment in time. The that was at uh, Manama when I did my master after master exhi exhibition final exhibition or whatever. And the idea was to walk around and to describe everybody coming in, coming out, and what they were wearing, what they were doing, and be myself the um, give the input on other things instead of letting other people um, give input. That's useless. So uh, yeah, that's that. And uh, basically, I just continued with uh, Matrix Printer. The very same one, actually, and to print yeah booklets and and um, print uh, my imagery on, because it has uh, this uh, um, time temporality. That's yeah, um, like it's uh, flimsy, flimsy, cheap paper in a chain, which already suggests uh, a timeline. And like the texture, I really like the the um, plasticness or whatever, like the touch, because it's a 24 pin matrix printer. So and each of the pins are uh, 0 0.03 uh, millimeters thick, which is really thick to create an image. And so you have like this. Um, imperfectness I have a lot of imperfectness but I really I really love that it gives like a, a special uh, um, character okay I'm going to um, if I print it on normal printer then it becomes like um, it's perfect but it's I, uh, it's exactly what I want but it's not I the image is, yeah, I pff, yeah, okay, come. And <coughs> moving on, maybe I can retake myself in the coming moments. So yeah, this still. Um, I know, and the the atmosphere it generates is that it stands on its own. Yeah, and this was at Holland, and the idea was to nice, nice. The idea was to um, uh, improve on the concept of people giving input, but uh, push them with questions. So let people answer questions that um, I, instead of letting them type anything, because then they have to like break conformity and type something and come up with something to say. So we wanted to uh, push uh, push them with questions like. Uh, where where are you from? Where are you from? And do you have a cat or whatever? And we experimented three days with different sets of questions to make people, uh, yeah, uh, interact because that's the idea. And the uh, other side was to have online people participate, and because the image summarizes the content, we wanted to create like. Um, uh, that uh, show the difference visually to the uh, online contribu contribution and physical participants, because I uh, I can't say, but uh, because they didn't have any internet, so the that's uh, often the case. But uh, I the I um, yeah I lost my thread. Um, Ah, yeah, the idea is that uh, I suppose they will have increased a, a very specific difference because you're more relaxed when you're typing on your computer at your home than you are when you're at an event and you have to type, I go to the computer, type something and other people see what you're typing and 
so there, I, there this uh, would have been a different difference for sure. And yeah, that's the basic idea was again people give input, but then we change it up to the uh, I we change the the matrix printer. And the idea was to create folders of the specific moments in time. So you have every 30 minutes interval, you would have like a folder of the last 30 minutes. That looked, yeah, these are uh, questionnaires. So, and this is an example of uh, one of those timelines. It's uh, divided in 14 segments. And Every, every time an addition is made, it creates a segment on what's happened. So uh, over there, somebody talked about something with nature. Those red segments are two uh, scolding, uh, scolding, like insults. And uh, the over there, that's architecture. So not much uh, constructive contribution. And then fast, last one, um, Google. So. What I'm doing now is I'm using Google um, as a source to create the lines. So I use, I have dictionaries with uh, architecture, blah, 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 blah. And I use for the visual ones, Google as an index to see what those images are. So I give them in, in Google image, ser image search and s use what Google tells me archi architecture is. So and with those uh, images, I create lines, and then I use those lines to um, create imagery. So in a way, Google uh, tells me what the visual part is, and yeah, so on. Um, the other side is that uh, the plan or the idea is to create something that lives online and cre generates imagery um, based on the daily news, right? based on the changes in the news, without my um, uh, um, disturbance, or how do you say? Um, intervention. intervention. And yeah, that's uh, like the, the, the installations. I, I said before that it's only one work, and the one work is the core, like the translation uh, process, because it keeps on changing. Like every every new dictionary, every new line, ev everything changes a little, and I constantly rework everything. So even if I would do the same installation again, it wouldn't be the same because it would generate other results, and also the the character changes as more uh, content gets involved, like more specific, like especially things like positive, negative, uh, large, tic-tin, blah, 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 blah. Do those have a really big impact and then it all changes. So in a way, there's only one work and all the you know, works the are um, time milestones in a way. 